Welcome everyone, my name is Adam Manis. Today we're doing a guided practice session on three levels of triad pairs. This is gonna be a classic guided practice session where we work with a metronome. I'll be playing some bass lines for you and you will be working. So get to your instrument. This is for all instruments. We do have some piano voicings there for you for our pianist. Uh, so this guided practice session has a PDF. I encourage you to download that if you wanna follow along, but I will have the notation up on screen for us as we go. And as always, everything we do around here is brought to you by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com. Uh, you can check out all our courses, including my new Triad Pairs Bootcamp course, which deals with exactly what we're gonna be working on today. Speaking of work, let's get to work. So we're doing three levels. We're starting very basic with a lot of space with some Triad Pairs, and we're gonna get more and more complicated, more and more crazy, really. I mean, it's gonna get weird. Uh, just be prepared for that, but in a good way, in a good way. So the first question is, what are triad pairs? Well, triad pairs are kind of a modern device. I think of McCoy Tyner and Chick Corea and Michael Brecker and some very modern players that use this sort of architecture, right? This framework around chord changes to make some really interesting shapes, really interesting melodic lines that give us this really cool sense of structure, but being able to take it inside and outside the changes. And we can start very basic, right? So uh, it doesn't really matter what the triads you use are in the end. There are some really common ones that sound good over certain kind of chords. And so that's where I'm gonna kind of steer you here at first. We'll use some very like, you know, the, the go-tos. Uh, for each chord here to start. And we're gonna start out with giving ourselves lots of space and then we're gonna kinda close in on that space as we go. So here, level one, we have a lot of space actually. We're doing a two, five, one in the key of C. We're gonna do that all throughout this guided practice session. So get ready for that. That way we can take it to other keys later. So we have our two chord, our D minor seven, right? Just a Dorian sound, basic Bob Dorian D minor seven. Uh, we're gonna use two triad pairs that I think sound great over this, F major, and G major, right? That F major, you got the third, you got the five, you got the seven of D minor. The G major, you got the 11, you got the 13, you have the root, you have some really pretty notes and some really solid foundational notes. That's what using triad pairs does. Now we'll get into how to use them in just a second, but I'm we're just picking our pairs here at first. So then on the G7, we're gonna use the same ones, right? Like I said, we're gonna give ourselves lots of space. So we're gonna be using these same two triads to get all of our melodic content over these first two chords of the two, five, one. Then we go to the C major seven and we're gonna use the five and the six, right? The G major and the A minor. Again, some really strong note choices here, all set up in that, that beautiful structure of a triad. So with the G major, you've got the five, you've got the seven, you've got the nine of C. And with that A minor, you've got the 13, the root and the third. And then we're gonna use those same two triad pairs for the sixth chord, right? A little turnaround chord here, our A minor, the G major and the A minor. Isn't that great? The reason why triad pairs work so well, like to set up a framework for our improvisation, for our melodic lines, especially for this specific kind of sound, is that because our ear just naturally likes the shape. It, we, this, these triads have been around in music now. Our, I mean, they've been around our whole lives, but for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so we're just really accustomed to even things that sound dissonant. If they're in the form of a triad, our ear is like, oh yeah, I know that, I know that. So how do we use these? We, we could, you know, just do this, right? And that's gonna be kind of boring. So how do we use these triads in our improvisation in a real way, in a practical way? So check this out. I've got some little etudes. We're going to start with etudes and then I'm going to free you up to just improvise using these triads here. And again, you could see F, F major, G major, and then F major, G major. I've got some left hand voicings for a pianist there. And then on the C major seven, we've got A minor, G minor, A minor, G minor. So we can break these up in the different inversions of the triad. And then in different shapes, we'll start here with level one, very, very basic. So. Listen to that. That's just some really basic triad pairs where we can 
sort of move our hand in these cool directions and get this great sound. That's the other thing is like, especially for pianists, I think these are so natural feeling in our hands. They just they lay really, really well in our hands. So let's try playing this etude and then I'm gonna let you off the leash to do whatever you want here with these triad pairs on this change. But let's start with as written here, or at least as close to as we can get. So I've got my click uh, set to beats two and four, like it's the hi-hat. And let's just play through it as written here. One, two, one, two, three, and. Again, one, two, three, and let's loop it. We'll just keep it going. Got it. Keep it going. I want to play some bass for you so you can hear how it sounds. Keep it up. Last time, last time. So what's great about these etudes is you get to hear how they might sound, you know, planned out. It's a little contrived, right? I mean, it literally is contrived. We're writing it out, which is not the worst idea, actually. I think it was in Herbie Hancock's autobiography where he was talking about how he was struggling to play fast and someone recommended that he write out a solo for a fast tempo on rhythm changes, or it might have been Cherokee, one of the two. But anyway, as a way to just kind of feel it in your hands first before you can improvise. So that's kind of what these etudes do, at least for me. I love doing those. So let's try it, though. I want you to just explore now using these triad pairs. I have them labeled there, and you can use them however you want. Try different shapes, different inversions. Just change the triad pair when the chord changes. And you can use my voicings here if you're a pianist to help get the sound. I'll play some bass, two and four on the hi-hat. Here we go, one, two, one, two, three, and. Repeat. Explore here, see what you can get out of these triad pairs. If none of them, if some of them don't sound right, that's okay, that's good actually. Some of them shouldn't sound right, that's part of the exploration process. Last time, last time, you got it. Isn't that awesome? So much fun. It gives us a little bit of structure there in our melodic phrases. We kind of get that more modern sound, right? It kind of takes us out of like bebop enclosures and all that. It's a little bit more angular, uh, a little bit more impressionistic. Okay. Let's go to level two. Now, level two is where a lot of y'all are going to want to hang out because level two, level two sounds good. Level two sounds really, really good. So level two here on our D minor, on our two chord, we've got C major and D minor, right? So we've got these great, pretty notes here on the D minor, right? A Dorian sound. C 
major, the seven, the nine, the 11, and then D minor, which is just the root three, five, right? So like some, again, you'll notice some of the triad pairs, there's grounding and then there's pretty notes. They can be whatever you want, as long as it fits within the scale or the chord that you're using. I think it's anything's fair game. Our next chord, G7 alt, based off the altered scale, right? That seventh degree of A flat melodic minor ascending. G, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, and G. Two very common triads that you hear players use over this altered chord are the flat five, flat six, D flat, and E flat over our G7. Now for our C major seven, we're gonna do a little bit of alteration here. We're gonna do a sharp 11, so that Lydian sound. We're gonna use a D major and an E minor. Beautiful sound. Yeah, kind of takes you on this like roller coaster. Then we're gonna do in, uh, for our sixth chord instead of A minor, we're gonna do A seven alt. And again, we're gonna use the same formula we used on the G seven alt flat five flat six. Oof, some interesting fingering things are gonna happen there. I'm noticing. Okay, what does this look like? It looks pretty darn good actually. So we have our D minor going up to our C major on the D minor seven. Then we have our altered, right? Which is the D flat major, E flat major, that flat five, flat six major. You could do some really hip stuff there. Then our C major seven sharp 11, that Lydian sound, B major. And then our A seven alt, again, flat six, flat five, flat five, flat six, whatever. Doesn't matter the order, it doesn't matter the inversion, like it's all about exploring this and seeing what happens. So this sounds really good. Hey. Again. See what I'm saying? That's that sound, right? That's that really slick, like angular modern sound. Let's try it. Let's just try playing this etude as written. Check out those uh, chordal voicings I have there for the pianist in the left hand. Let's play it as written here at first, and then we'll start doing stuff to it. Here we go. One, one, two, one, two, three, and again, again. Got it. Still as written, just play it. hip isn't that super hip okay let's try it i'm not even going to stop the metronome let's keep it going i want you to explore now using these triad pairs you can use them in different combinations different orders different inversions different shapes really see what feels good on your instrument in your hand right now and just uh yeah explore the space as they say here we go one two one two three and
fun. Huh. Last time. Isn't that crunchy? It's crispy, right? Crunchy, crispy. I don't know what it is, but it's really, really fun, really good. Okay, now it's gonna get a little insane. So our level three is, it's nuts here. We're gonna do a bunch of crazy stuff to this. Just a bunch of alterations, a lot of dissonance. We're going, we're going full, <laughs> full level three here, like full on with these triad pairs, see what they can do. So. We're gonna do a lot of chord substitutions here for our two chord, D7 altered. We're gonna make that instead of Dorian, it's gonna be a whole on, full on altered sound. We're gonna use the same formula, flat five, flat six, because they sound so good. For our five chord, we're gonna do something nuts. We're gonna play this seven altered, right? Instead of G7, we're gonna play B7 altered. This is something you hear quite often. And we're gonna use the same formula, flat five, flat six, major triads, F major, G major. It actually makes it sound more inside. If you think about it, we're in the key of C. We've got an F major triad and a G major triad. You know what I'm saying? Just over a B7 altered is crazy. Then for our one chord, we're gonna be doing the sort of uh, the third mode of that A melodic minor, C major seven, augmented, sharp 11. Sh uh, sharp five, sharp 11. Again, A melodic minor ascending is what I'm thinking here. Kind of crazy. For our turnaround chord, we're gonna use an E flat seven, sus so is a tritone sub, and we're gonna suss it out. D flat major and E flat major are, tri are triad pairs. This is one of my favorites, great turnaround chord. Going back to that D7 altered, are you kidding me? It sounds amazing. Okay, what does the A2 look like? Well, it looks like this. So we've got our D7 altered, right, with the B flat major and A flat major, and then our B7 altered with our G major and F major. Again, the bass player doesn't have to change a damn thing here. He can, the bass player can just play whatever they want. Uh, they can play G7 and just imposing our B7 altered sounds great. And they could play A instead of E flat and you play E flat. It doesn't matter. Like th that kind of tension and resolution is what you want here actually. Now a good bass player might hear you and might go there and try to find where you're going with this. And that's cool too. But if they don't, if the bass player does not go with you, if they just go like strictly two, five, one, six, that's also cool. Like that doesn't really affect what you do here in this case. So like you might hear me and you will hear me play like a, a G instead of a B and that's the way it should be. Your these tri these substitutions are meant to be like alter like they're meant to be like whoa, what? You know, they're meant to sound out. So again, B7 here, G major triad, F major, then RC major 7 sharp 5. Ah, oh, so good. Then our E flat uh 7 sus. So the whole thing sounds like this. How did we get here? Let's try it. Play it as written here at first. One, two, one, two, three, and.
All right, now just explore these for yourself. Explore the triads we have here. See what you can make out of these crazy chord substitutions. I think you're going to like the results. I'll try to lay down a better bass line for you here. Hold on. the different inversions, different parts of your instrument, different orders for these, different combinations. See what you can come up with. It's really an exploration, for real. No wrong notes. This is where we're supposed to make wrong notes. stuff is crazy thank you so much for joining me here on this journey again uh, make sure to download the pdf and check out my new course triad paris boot camp we go through all of these from like the the bottom up right we start at the very basic and work our way all the way up and we do a bunch of guided practice sessions just like that over tunes too so go check that out there openstudiojazz.com thanks everybody till next time happy practicing